Thank you once more for this invitation. I think it's a pity I cannot be in person with you at the Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński University, but I am delighted to attend this important conference, at least online. Uh, I'd like to introduce shortly uh, my preliminary research is actually an overview on uh, Catholic martyrs in China. Uh, you will see, I think, uh, as far as I know, there are no oblates martyrs in China, but there are many, many other martyrs. Uh, oh, I think, okay. Uh, thus, for the contents, I will give uh, some introductory remarks as the next and a chronological overview, a few examples of uh, martyrs, and finally, a small conclusion. Uh, for the beginning, some terminological remarks about Catholic martyrs in China. Uh, the word martyr, martyr is actually very seldom used and uh, also not understood in China or Taiwan. Uh, traditionally, uh, you can see uh, in the history someone who suffered persecution and death for justice or political reason was called uh, Lie Shi. Is the first word, uh, including historical heroes, revolutionaries against the Qing dynasty, as well as communist martyrs, as for example, uh, Jiang Zhuyun, leading a group of guerrillas and killed in 1949, or uh, Liu Hulang. You can see uh, the picture there. Uh, for Christian, we don't see anything, just the first picture, nothing is moving. Oh. Okay, I have to make it in this way. If we can just listen to your that. Okay, uh, I think it will be the best solution because uh, I am now lost. Uh, oh, this, sorry for these uh, problems, but I cannot solve it. Uh, we just spoke about uh, martyrs in China. Yeah, so uh, the word martyr is uh, problematic in China. Uh, if we speak about Christian martyrs, uh, the word Xindaoje is used. Uh, actually, only among believers, stressing the death because of religious belief. Uh, we speak about Catholic martyrs in China and not about Chinese Catholic martyrs because many, actually, one fourth of martyrs in China were foreigners. On the other side, there were also martyrs of Chinese origin in other countries, as for example, Li Le Luen or Lorenzo Ruiz, a Chinese Filipino saint persecuted for his faith in Japan. Uh, finally, we speak about Roman Catholic martyrs in China, but we should be aware of other Christian martyrs, as for example, 222 Orthodox Saint Martyrs, sorry, you cannot see pictures, who died during the so-called Boxer Rebe Rebellion in the year 1900. Uh, some Protestant 
Christians speak about China martyrs, referring to about 700 Chinese Protestant Christians and foreign missionaries killed at the same time. And uh, you probably know the process of beatification of two Catholic and Greek Catholic missionaries to China, uh, Marian Fathers Andrzej Cicotto and Fabian Abrantowicz is continued, who were ordinaries of the Greek Catholic Church, of the Exarchate of Harbin, and were killed by Soviet communists. If we speak about Roman Catholic Church, about Catholic martyrs in China, uh, we speak usually about 120 martyr saints of China canonized on October 1st, 2000 by Pope John Paul II and commemorated on July 9th. There was, however, another canonization four years before. In 1996, a French Lazarus missionary to China, Jean-Gabriel Herbois, was proclaimed a saint. As you can see, Catholics in Taiwan and in China were waiting for quite a long time for the first Chinese saint, even if there were quite a lot of martyrs, especially in the last 400 years of the Catholic mission to China. Catholic martyrs in China can be divided chronologically in a few groups. The first one, there's only one martyr proclaimed a saint killed during the Manchurian invasion, the middle of 17th century, the Spanish missionary in the province Fujian, Francis Ferdinand de Capillas. The second one, during a few persecutions in the reign period of the Emperor Yongzhen and Qianlong in the 18th century, numerous Catholics were killed and five of them, two Dominican bishops and three fathers martyred in 1847-48. They were canonized. The third group, there was the persecution of the church continued in the first half of the 19th century by the Jiaqing, Daoguang, Xianfeng, and Tongzhi emperors. And many people were killed, especially in the provinces of Guizhou and Sichuan. And some of them became saints. One bishop, five foreign priests, two Chinese diocesan priests, four seminarians, six lay catechists, and seven other believers. Among them, first four women. In the year 1870, after tensions between China and foreign countries were growing, the Tianjin massacre happened. 60 people were murdered after the, the attack on Catholic orphanage for sick and abandoned children. Ten sisters of the Congregation of the Daughters of Charity were raped and killed. None of them, however, was canonized. And the biggest group, the fourth group of Saint Martyrs, is this from the time of the, of the uprising by the Ihe Tuan, Society for Justice and Harmony, commonly known as the Boxer Rebellion. During this anti-Christian uprising, thousands of Christians were murdered, especially in June and July 1900, and 70 of them, almost 80, were recognized as saint martyrs, among them bishops, priests, sisters, lay men, women, women and children, the youngest being only nine years old. The very last group of martyrs were two Salesians of Don Bosco, the Bishop Luigi Versilia and Father Calistus Caravario, killed by communist pirates in 1930 in the province Guangdong after they defended three girls from slavery. Of course, surely there are many other Catholic martyrs after this time, in the last 80 years, especially during the, the Cultural Revolution, however, no of them was proclaimed saint until now. 
Uh, a few examples should be given now, representing different groups of Catholic martyrs of China. Uh, I will start from Francis Ferdinand de Capillas, the martyr from the beginnings of Catholic missions in China. Born in Spain in 1607, he entered at the age of 17 uh, Dominican order and was sent as missionary to the Philippines. There he was, he was ordered a priest and worked for about 10 years uh, on the island of Luzon. And in 1641, he was sent to Taiwan to work with Aboriginal people. Uh, Taiwan was in that time a Spanish colony. However, soon uh, the colony was captured by the Dutch and Dominican missionaries have to move to the main, mainland China. The Capillas arrived there in 1642 in the province of Fujian and engaged, was engaged in evangelization among the Chinese people of the region, especially in the city of Fuan. The mission, as far as we know, was quite successful. He was able to establish their big community. Uh, however, after a few years, Manchurians started the conquest of the Ming Dynasty. The south of China was still under the Ming Dynasty and invaded province Fujian a few years later. The Capillas was captured while returning from a sick person for whom he administered sacraments. And according to testimonies of believers, he was taken to the worst local prison, was tortured. Uh, we have his letter from the jail stating, I am here with other prisoners and we have developed a fellowship. They ask me about the gospel of the Lord. I am not concerned about getting out of here because here I know I am doing the will of God. I live here in great joy without any worry, knowing that I am here because of Jesus Christ. The pearls I have found here these days are not always easy to find. Soon he was sentenced, sentenced to death for disseminating false doctrines uh, and uh, his sentence, the decapitation, was carried out the same day. Uh, the second example of martyr saint is Bishop Peter Sanz, the bishop in China from the time of persecution of 18th century. Uh, he was Spanish, too, similar to the, Cap the Capillas, uh, born in 1680. He became a member of the Dominican order and as he was 17, uh, he, he, he entered the order. And after completing his theological studies, he was ordained a priest uh, and sent to the mission to China. Uh, in 1715, he entered China with a small group of Dominican and began his ministry in Xiamen, province Fujian. Only two years later, he became superior of the Dominican mission in China. However, that time persecution started and the mission work became very dangerous and limited. Missionary had to hide, spending time in small rooms, in prayer and meditation. And finally, he would flee to Canton in 1730 with the help of the local Christians and what was there nominated Vicar Apostolico, Apostolico Fujian. There was there consecrated also a bishop. And after that, despite of persecution, he returned immediately to his mission to Fujian and continued his pastoral work for about 10 years uh, hiding in Christian homes. But finally, he was arrested by imperial authorities, uh, along with four other Dominican missionaries, was tortured and sentenced to death. He was be beheaded in 1747, and the other Dominicans were executed next year. The next example of the Chinese priest Augustin Zhao Zhong is from the beginning of 19th century as persecutions became 
permanent in the life of the Catholic Church in China, and very few foreign missionaries could enter secretly the country. Zhao Zhong was born in the province Sichuan and became, uh, and became a prison guard at the age of 20. And his job included to guard Chinese Catholics and to escort foreign missionaries to other prisons. He was moved by the passions of Christians, visited them and discussed the Holy Scriptures. And soon after that, he was baptized and later, after a few years, also ordained to the priesthood in 1781. Uh, he zealously fought the Christian faith, helped the people and baptized many children. And apparently, he escorted also the French Bishop John Gabriel I from the Paris Foreign Mission Society on the long journey to his execution in Peking. Finally, in 1815, he was arrested while administering the sacraments for the sick person. He was imprisoned in Chengdu, tortured, and died in the same year. <coughs> uh, the last example is Elizabeth Chinpian, a lay woman murdered as one of 90, 80, 80 other Catholic martyr saints during the Boxer Rebellion. Similarly to the most of them, only a very few information is known about her life before the rebellion. We know that she was born in 1846 in the Hubei province, married there and was a good mother of six children. Then her husband died and she became alone to take care of them. As Boxer Rebellion started, her family was persecuted as Catholic and she tried to flee to another village. A wealthy man, a wealthy man from this village promised to protect the whole family in exchange for marriage. But after his plans failed, he informed the boxers where the family of Qin Bien was hiding. They came, killed sons of Elizabeth, and forced her to renounce her Catholic faith. And after she refused, Elizabeth and her daughters were taken outside the village and murdered on July 19, 1900. A, a very short conclusion. Of course, many, many other similar examples of Catholic martyrs in China could be given, but uh, just uh, a very small summary, a small conclusion. Uh, the first, as we could see, saint martyrs can be found as well as in all periods of Catholic mission to China, especially in the last 400 years. The second one, only a small part of Catholic martyrs in China became proclaimed a saint. All of them, a part of one, apart from one, were canonized in the year 2000. Then the third one, no Catholic martyr living after the year 1930 was recognized as a saint until now. One fourth of Catholic martyr saints are foreign missionaries, bishops, priests, and sisters, but the biggest part are Chinese lay men and women. In the last one, Catholic martyr saints were killed in the most cases by Chinese authorities or rebels. They were murdered because they were Christians. They refused to deny the Christian faith and continued their missionary work. I hope this very short overview about Catholic martyrs in China was interesting for you. Sorry once more for problem with video. Thank you very much for your attention.